and he is coming soon. Thank you for that song. Beautifully done. Appreciate the goodness of the Lord, don't you? God's good. Amen. In the book of Amos, you don't have to turn there. You might want to. If you do, that's fine. But I had a, <clears throat> a thought this week and turned to this particular scripture, which I had read in the past. And I got to thinking about our nation, about our part of this world. I know that I have been, and that uh, Charlotte's been with me, on several trips in different nations of this world and seen the hunger that was there. I'm not speaking about necessarily physical hunger, but for the Word of God. And uh, it's amazing how that God has blessed our nation as he has, and yet people just take it for granted. And for those that have given their life in the battlefield to keep this nation free, some people can't uh, even grasp uh, what that might mean. You know, we had uh, back in the uh, 60s and so forth, those draft dodgers and left and went to Canada and then they come back later. I think, uh, bless God, if they left like that, they ought to have to stay gone. Talked to a fellow this past week that was a Quaker. And he said he didn't go to service, didn't go because he didn't believe in war. I said, what do you think kept us free? He just dropped his head. I'll tell you, I respect those that have served as well as those that are serving now, and certainly for those that have given their life on the, on the battlefield. Anyhow, Amos said that this is going to happen. There's going to be a day, and I believe we're on the threshold of this day. In the 11th verse, the 8th chapter, Behold, the day cometh, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but for hearing of the word of the Lord. How many today have just turned a deaf ear to the things of God? They have no regard for the church, for the Lord Jesus Christ, for you as a Christian, in a lot of cases, uh, there's no respect for the uh, for a Christian as there was uh, years ago. But uh, thank God he's coming back. Amen. So there is a famine today. And it's unknown in this nation we live in, but it's coming. And I'll assure you, it will come. If God let his own people go into Egypt and they suffered for 400 years, this nation will not get by without it. Only the redeemed of the Lord. Now, thank God I am redeemed. We've been blessed beyond any description. No nation in this world has ever been blessed as our nation here in America. We were at one time the envy of the world because of how God had blessed. And we were highly respected in those days. But because of things in political realms and political decisions, uh, all of that's changed now. I can't say a great deal about that. Anyhow, we see this as we realize uh, the Word of God, the famine of the Word of God. And there is a famine today for hearing of the Word of God. There are signs in our society today that shows the indifference of people having toward the Lord Jesus Christ and toward the church that is a believing church. Well, there's a lot of churches, but there's not a lot of believing churches today. And so we see this, few churches grow today as they did in, in the past. 
Uh, we realize that today, don't we? A nation without the Bible is a nation without freedom. Look back at your history and see that Russia had the Bible before we had the Bible. And look at them today. Nation upon nation had the Word of God before we received the Word of God. And yet today, the Bibles have been burned and destroyed and Christianity has ceased in that nation. And today, uh, they're, they're uh, in a sad, sad shape. Uh, you see, only those that are saved by the grace of God, a nation I'm talking about, and individuals that live in that nation, you have to have a biblical foundation. Without that foundation and building on that foundation, the house cannot stand. It has to be built upon one foundation, not several religions, not several beliefs, but one religion and one faith, and that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's not another God in this world. There are a lot of little gods that people worship, and yet those cannot save. They cannot do anything to help an individual in time of need. Only God can do that. Would our nation wake up to realize that we need to redeem the days because the days are evil and get back to where we were with the Lord? Wouldn't it be great if our nation had a great awakening today and realized the need to return once again unto the Lord. The Bible says without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin. And these individuals who have given their life, they gave their life with a reason and a purpose. They gave it so you and I could be free and keep our nation free. For those of us that were in the military, we took an oath when we went into the military that if need be, we'd give our life for this nation. And those people lived up to that oath. They gave their life for you and I. I think about this from time to time. If we're, our nation just wake up and realize, but I believe God's going to have to set the alarm clock and it's going to have to go off and people are going to have to realize there's only one God and there's only one way. The Bible said that in that day men would uh, think and do as what they felt in their own heart was right. That doesn't mean it was right. Amen. But they'd do as they thought it was right. But that doesn't mean it would be right. Amen. So we, de we know uh, the, a, Bible, a, a nation without the Bible is a nation has no faith whatsoever. No faith. How many times back in the years when I first began to preach, our phone would ring several times a week and they would say, we want you to remember this person in prayer. We want you to have the church to remember this person in prayer. And we'd probably get anywhere from 15 to 25 phone calls during the week. Very seldom. Does that ever happen anymore? Because people don't have the faith that they once had because of the circumstances in which they live today. If the leaders of our nation are ungodly, you can rest assured the nation will be ungodly. But if men are righteous, then our nation would rather have righteousness than to have sin. Amen. Amen. The Bible said that righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And so we see that in the Word of God. We know that uh, Romans told us very plainly concerning that scripture over there in Romans chapter 7, that if we uh, are a nation, it started in chapter 7, went to chapter 10, three whole chapters that deal with the nation that loves God and serves God. And so I appreciate the Lord, don't you? 
But as we celebrate Memorial Day today, it's become a day that is official. The businesses will be closed tomorrow. People will gather together for various reasons. Maybe families come together, what have you. But the price of freedom has always been high. It's always been high. And let me just say this while I'm mentioning that. Uh, if, if you'll allow me to say this, the price of our freedom came at the death of the Lord Jesus Christ when he shed his blood and said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. The ultimate price was paid for you and I to be saved. What a blessing that is to realize that. We're told over in the scriptures, and I'll mention on it very quickly, about the ceremony itself. We take too lightly the blessings, the blessings, and then listen carefully, brought to us by the shedding of blood. This nation has taken that very, very lightly. It all began in the Vietnam War. I was there. I'll tell you today, when you could walk through the airport with a with a, a uniform on and people spit on you, you say that yeah, in Atlanta, it happened because they had no regard for that uniform. We didn't wear it to try to impress somebody. We wore it because we were getting a special price on flying in the airplane, and we were coming home. Amen. But people had such a disregard, they'd spit on you. Well, I'll tell you, it took a lot to walk away from that. But I'm saying today, all of this disregard started back in the 60s. Amen. And it's gotten worse and worse and worse until this present day. People think God's going to wink at sin. It's not going to happen. God's not going to wink at sin. Sin is a reproach to anyone. Amen. Amen. And this nation's going to have to turn back to God because God's going to, he's going to turn the light switch off one day. Amen. We've got a man in the White House now that thinks everything ought to be run off electricity. Huh? I mean, how far out there can you be? They may sell them cars, but I ain't buying one. And I don't believe anybody will. I'm simply saying today that we've lost our human reasoning and the ability to think that the God that created this earth put everything here that we need to be able to live. There's oil in the ground. There's Light, I realize that. And people are using that. There's nothing wrong with that. But don't be totally dependent upon it. Amen. I mean, it's like taking a book of matches and expecting them to last all night long, okay? Lighting one at a time. It ain't going to work. That's the same theory. But I'm saying that a nation without the Bible is a nation without hope. A nation without the Bible is a nation that has no faith. And a nation without the Bible has no regard for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as well as the blood of those that have given their life on a battlefield. Today, I'm saying honestly, our nation is going to have to be woke up. We're going to have to be woke up. We've gotten so dependent upon our own ability. So we see the Bible says the death of Christ and what he purchased for us as Christians today. Thank God for that. What he purchased for us, he gave us freedom. And the freedom that we have today is greater than the freedom of the world. Let me just mention quickly today some things that I have written down. First of all, we have the freedom from fear. There's no fear when you have that freedom. The Bible said, perfect love casteth out fear. Thank God for that today. Then we see, next of all, we don't worry about death. 
God's already took care of that. He died our death upon Calvary's cross. He rose from the grave out of that tomb. And you and I will also rise at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the Bible says the dead in Christ will rise and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Going to be there a long time. How long is that? I don't know. It's a long time. However long is a long time? Tell me. I don't know how long a long time is. But the Bible said, so shall we ever be. Well, we'll be there a long time. Glad you don't have to pack a suitcase, ain't you? Amen. I'm glad I don't worry about hell no more. I do, I am concerned about it because I know people, unless there's a change, that's where they're going. And they're going to end up there. And it's their decision to make. It's their choice to make. You see, one of the big issues the devil has pulled down through the years is to say, well, you don't have to do that today when the Lord's dealing with a person's heart. You don't have to do that today. You've still got a lot of time in life. You've got a lot of years to go. You don't have to do that today. Well, he's a liar. For the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. And there's been a lot of people that it's been too late. Amen. If they regarded eternity and regarded the things of the Lord, they would beckon for the Lord to call them. For the Bible said none can call, come unless they're called of the Lord. You can't just pick the day and hour you want to get saved. It don't work that way. Only God can do that by the wooing of the Holy Spirit of God, compelling people to come and accept Christ as their personal Savior. And somebody said to me one time, said, Preacher, do you believe it can be too late for somebody? I said, the Bible says that a person can set out his day of grace. That's all I can tell you. I cannot argue and will not argue other than to tell you you can set out your day of grace and God no longer would deal with you. I visited a man one time that as a boy he had, I really thought a lot of him. I, uh, he helped me as a young boy a lot of, in a lot of things as a, as a young boy. And uh, he would bring his wife and set her out at the church and he would go home. And I was called to preach and we were between churches at the time. And so we were there with Brother Kenny Ray and, and God really began to deal with me about visiting him. And so we did. And one of the things that he said to me was that uh, got my attention. Uh, he said, Preacher, I understand that you're a preacher now. And I said, Yes, sir, I am. God's called me. He said, uh, you know, I bring my wife, and I won't mention his name, and let her out, and then I come back home, and then I go back and get her. And I said, yeah, I know that. He said, the one thing that I've never told anybody is I can't read the Bible. And so it hinders me to be in a group of people, and someone may say, would you read this or would you do this? He said, I can't. So he said, what I did, and maybe it's not right, this is what he said. He said, I read the lives of those that went to that church. And he said, a lot of them didn't live up to what I was told was in that book. You see, the Bible says we're to let our light shine before men that they might see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Now, it's a, sad, it's a sad situation, but he said, if my name was written on the side of a boxcar, I couldn't tell you that was my name. That's pitiful, isn't it? That he'd have that feeling. And he said there was a time when it seemed like I'd pull up in that churchyard 
and God had said, why don't you just go on in? And he said, I'd fight that off and I'd leave and go home. And he said, now I can go and let my wife out and go home and it don't bother me. Well, Brother Kenny Ray was the pastor of the church and at that time he spoke up and he said, Brother, we can pray that God would deal with your heart once again and draw you unto himself. I'll tell you, we don't know how many people are lost today that we rub elbows with every week. And some of them may be like him. And I've thought about that time and time again. They may have had a problem. And nobody don't know about their problem. But yet, we shouldn't say that, what's wrong with that man? He don't go to church. His wife goes, he don't go. Don't do that. You don't know the circumstances that may be there. And you need to pray for that person and invite them and let them know that we care. I'm talking about all of us, okay? Because we may be the only hope that they have of reaching eternity. A man told Charlotte about her grandfather said he's gone too far there's no way he'll get saved he's a deacon Mm -hmm. I never gave up on him for 20 years I prayed I prayed for him and him standing with a quart jar of white liquor in his hand and I still prayed for him that night when we visited the home with brother Ted Hensley Brother Farland Guffey sat there and talked a while. Tears began to run down his cheeks. He rolled out of a chair and palsy was so bad that he couldn't even walk by himself and got on his knees and cried out for God to save him. Brother Kenneth's father is who it was. God gloriously saved him that night. 85 years old when God saved him. We didn't give up on him. She prayed every day. God heard that cry. Amen. You know what the first words that he said, Brother Bruce, when he got up off his knees, we helped him up, set him in the chair, said, when can I be baptized? What a blessing. What a blessing. With a preacher, with a church that was as close, I could have thrown a rock from his house to that church and the preacher would never visit that man because he believed that lie. He done gone too far. But when he got saved, you know what he wanted to do? Think I'm wrong in telling this? When he got saved and was going to be baptized, he wanted to be the one to baptize him. Let me say this. I'm just glad he got baptized. That didn't that didn't make no difference to me, although I didn't think he was worthy to baptize him if he had done marked him off. I'm glad nobody didn't mark me off. Aren't you glad they didn't mark you off? You off and you? I'm glad they didn't mark me off. They still kept on praying. Young people, you ought to be so thankful that people love you enough to pray for you and not mark you off. We've all sinned. Don't misunderstand me. Every one of us in here is a sinner. We're a sinner by nature. We're saved by grace. Amen. No one here is perfect. We've never been or never will be perfect in this life. Brother Jonathan talked about uh, sanctification this morning. You know, there is an endowed sanctification. That's when you get saved. You're washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are saved and sanctified. You become His, bought with a price. But then there is a progressive sanctification. 
that we all have to go through in life. Little things that we say or things that we do or things that we think or things we act, it doesn't line up with what God wants. And so he has to deal with that to get that out of us to where we can be more like him. That's the way God works. But we're still not perfect. I've met a few people that thought they were. Hadn't you? They're very quick to tell me about everybody else. But whatever I said to that gentleman, you've told me about everybody else, now let me tell you about you. What I see in you. And when I told him, he got fighting mad. I said, see, you ain't perfect. That's what God wants us to realize. Without him, we're nothing. We have to have him. He holds us in his hand. John 17 said, if you'd have read it on that, Father, I pray for them that thou hast given me. I pray not that thou would take them out of the world, but that thou would keep us them. For no man hath the power to pluck them out of my hand. That's God's word. I'm right there. Ain't you, Bruce? I'm right there. Amen. He's got me right there. Girls, he got you right there in his hand. Isn't that good? He ain't doing this deal saying, well, I'll keep you in my hand today, but tomorrow I'm too busy. I won't be able to do that tomorrow. I'm glad tomorrow he'll keep me in his hand. God's real. And he's just as real as we'll let him be. He wants to do exceedingly abundantly above what we ask or think. The question rose this morning, should we pray for ourselves? I believe that we should. We ought to say a prayer like this, Lord, I need you today. I need your strength today. I need your ability today. I need your direction today. I need you to show me the pathway of this day and the lives of those that are put before me. I need you to give me the words to say to that person. Yes, we ought to pray for ourselves that God could use us in his way. That's the most important part. I believe that. I appreciate the church. I appreciate all of our church. Amen. Those that are watching through the media. In most Sundays, we're having over 200 people that are watching. People come up to me and say, I've been taking, I had a, uh, I was up in the edge of the garden yesterday and a lady walked up walked out of the road, came up there where we were earlier, Brother Ralph, and said, I just wanted to come by and let you know that I watch you every Sunday. You don't know where God's taking that and what he might do with it. And I praise his name that he's allowed us that privilege. Thank God for that. You say, well, we need them here. Well, I'll agree with that. But maybe God's working on them. They may show up here one day. Amen. I hope it's been a blessing to you today as we remember those that have given their life for you and I and for all of those others. We realize that we celebrate it through the Lord's Supper, through baptism. We know that the day's coming when we'll rise to be with the Lord and we, we celebrate the Christian life. I'm glad I can do that. I don't have to party to have a Christian life. Amen. I see folks all the time. I got to tell you this. I don't know whether I mentioned it before we close. They have this thing next door every Saturday. And they have, a, I think it's called goat yoga. Bruce, you need to come over there, buddy. 
honest to the Lord. And uh, they cage up the place, pretty good size. And uh, they bring these little goats in there. They did bring some pretty good size goats. But when they'd get down to do them exercises, them goats would hit them in the bottom end and turn them a flip. And I was going up to the field in the, with the tractor. And that happened. I had to stop and dislike. And that woman just got up and shook her fist at me. But now they got the smaller version of the goats, little. And uh, they'll jump up on their back and they're out there doing that. And it's plum comical to watch it. If you want to see it, just come by on Saturday morning. The circus begins about 9.30. And you'll have a good time. But uh, I didn't know. I thought maybe some of you might want to go join in with them over there with that goat yoga. And uh, I wanted to give you the opportunity. This fellow brings them up out of old folk. And uh, I did speak to him and uh, for just a moment. It was on friendly terms. But uh, he was telling me about that. But that was comical. But seriously today, we thank the Lord for every veteran. I know we have Veterans Day. It'll be here before we know it. But today's Memorial Day or tomorrow is Memorial Day, and we certainly want to remember those who gave their life. When I went to school at Fairview, there was a, a big monument in the front of the school that had the names of all of the soldiers who had died in the, in the war. I don't know what they've done with that uh, stone. Some <laughs> liberal probably had to move it, but... Uh, if they move it, they ought to put it right in their bedroom where they had to see it every night. Amen. But God bless you is our prayer. I believe it. Hope you have a great moral day. Let's stand together and we'll be dismissed.